When I started off doing ocean science, most of it was curiosity driven. Solving fascinating nature puzzles, exploring interesting features in the ocean. It was cool, it was exciting, it was fun. I got to spend a lot of time at sea, which I loved. I had the incredible opportunity to dive in Alvin, this unique submersible the size of a Mini Cooper that can go all the way down to the ocean floor. Probably the most exciting day of my life, even though my kids disagree. On this dive in Alvin, we found gas hydrates, methane trapped in ice-like structures that could become a new fossil fuel source. But I soon started to realize that I didn't want to help give rise to yet another fossil fuel source and that I could use my knowledge of working with samples and analyzing samples from the deep sea to figure out what fossil fuels have already done to our world. So I decided to change the focus of my career. I decided to try and tackle climate change, the challenge of our lifetime, rather than add to it. I went to Le Monde and I started studying climate, how the Earth climate has evolved over the history of the planet. I was going deep into the past instead of going deep into the ocean. Now, there's a lot of talk out there about how complex and how complicated climate change is. I disagree. I think it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. This is it. Climate change in 12 words. One, it's warming. Two, it's us. Three, we are sure. Four, it's bad. And five, we can fix it. I've always been suspicious about the urge to complicate things when the facts are actually pretty clear. And I think climate change is one of these examples. And I urge you to be equally suspicious. None of this is rocket science. The planet has been warming. We know this from temperature measurements done with thermometers, the type of thermometer that you and I use in our daily lives. And those measurements show that the planet has warmed by about two degrees Fahrenheit over the past century on average. That warming is due to greenhouse gases. And these greenhouse gases come from burning fossil fuels, oil, coal, and natural gas. It's not complicated and it's not new. We've known that greenhouse gases warm the planet for well over a century but yet we keep on emitting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. More than half of the global emissions have happened in the latter half of my lifetime. You wanna talk about a midlife crisis? That is a midlife climate crisis. People like to stoke a debate, but trust me, there is no debate. We know this. The vast majority of experts, of climate scientists agree that climate change is happening and it is due to human activity. And it's not just that there is a consensus. We actually know the science behind it and we know the facts behind it. Now you may ask yourself, is what we are observing just the natural variability that the Earth is going through? And in order to answer that question, we need context, we need perspective. And that context, in the case of climate change, is actually the past variability of the climate on the planet. Yes, the Earth has warmed before and the Earth has cooled before without any human intervention. And luckily, the Earth keeps a record. In fact, the oceans do. I go out on the ocean and I get these records. About a year ago, I led an expedition to the South Pacific on this amazing ship the drill ship Joydus Resolution. We went to the South Pacific, to a place that is so remote that the people closest to us were the astronauts in the International Space Station. And while we were out there, we drilled the ocean floor. We were out there for two months and we got about two miles sediment cores. And those sediments, they accumulate layer by layer by layer, slowly on the ocean floor and they store that information so we can use these sediment cores to go back in time, tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years, 
to understand the climate variability of the past and to read it just like a history book of past climates. And it's these sediment cores, together with theory that was developed almost a century ago, that allow us to understand climate variability. Not only do we know how it changed and how these changes looked like, we also understand why that is. There's tiny variations in the Earth orbit around the Sun. And those tiny variations actually lead to the Earth sometimes receiving a little bit more sunlight and sometimes a little bit less sunlight. Now, these changes in the amount of sunlight that the Earth receives are very, very, very slow. They take tens of thousands of years, but they pace the natural climate variability on Earth and then combined with greenhouse gases and internal feedbacks, they drive the natural variability of how the climate has been changing in the past. You can see this here, this beautiful natural rhythm over almost a million years, how the temperature in blue and the CO2 concentration in red are going step in step and showing this beautiful natural cycle that we observe. In just 150 years, mankind has become a force that is comparable to these majestic orbital cycles of the Earth around the Sun. Think about that. I do this for a living, but it gives me a pause every single time I think about this and I realize that, how crazy that is. We are in a mess but we can fix it. It's not a mystery. We know what we have to do. We have to stop emitting greenhouse gases. There's no question about that. And we, as a global society, we have to wean ourselves off carbon. But look at what we've done to the planet and to the climate system over the past 150 years by accident. Most of us haven't known this, but now we do. And imagine what we can do if we take all of our knowledge of past climates, all of our understanding that we have about the climate system and the carbon cycle, and do the right thing. Find our footing again and bring the planet back onto its natural rhythm.